that aspect of him probably established a faith that was among the most significant that I've ever seen in an individual. Because what the Jesuits gave my father was an opportunity to be able to probe deeply into himself and to be able to find out what his true faith was. At the age of 24, he had the opportunity to return to Shepherds as a coach. And the plan at that time was for him to come to Shepherds, to come back to the Jesuits, to be there for a couple of years, and then go to the seminary. Because he was that deeply involved in his faith. On his first team that ended up winning the Southwestern Maine Championship was Lockley Jennings. Lockley Jennings was a wonderful player. Lockley Jennings had a sister named Mary. <laughs> that sister named Mary changed the plan. <laughs> and otherwise, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> and our family over here would not be here. And it was an amazing relationship that lasted through the course of um, six decades. And at that age, he now was faced with a lot of challenges. One of the challenges was basketball was not his best game. He was a wonderful football player, a wonderful athlete. Uh, played uh, for the Portland Sagamores for many years. And in basketball, he needed help to be able to establish philosophical base and technical base. And he was so fortunate because he met one of the great men in his life, Jim Cannell. Jim was a postmaster in Rockland, and he was kind of the guru of the 30s and 40s in basketball. Jim's son, Jim, is here today, and, and I'm so proud that he is, because I remember the two of them linking up when Jim used to come to our home down in Massachusetts when they won the championship uh, in the Boston Garden. And it was an absolutely wonderful relationship, and, and it's something I'll never forget and our family will always be thankful for. And as that developed and evolved, the glory of the days of 1939 and 40 and 41, right through the time that he left Chevres, um, were fantastic memories to my father, and he always talked about them with reverence. And then, through the course of the next three or four years, we began to have a family, and we ran into a very, very difficult situation because our mother um, became ill. And through the course of almost the next decade, it was a very difficult situation to deal with. And my father went to Danvers and had great success as a coach. As he had great success as a coach, they wanted to move closer to Boston in order for my mother to be able to get um, treatment. And miraculously, he had got this job at Weymouth, and when he went to Weymouth, he had the chance to be able to be uh, in a fantastic athletic community with people that had been part of his Fordham experience. One of the young men that played in his program is John Burgess. John is over here, and, and John um, was a wonderful athlete at Weymouth, became captain of football um, at the University of Massachusetts, also played basketball at the University of Massachusetts, and has had a wonderful coaching career, and was so pleased and proud that he's here. And there became a time that in the spring of 1950 um, that my father had to make a decision. We were having a difficult time, or he was having a difficult time being able to pay for what was the medical treatment that was going on. And as that occurred, he now had to make a decision. And the decision he made was to work a second job. So what he did over the course of the next decade was to teach school from 7.30 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, come home, go across the street from where we live, which was across the street from a railroad station, and take the train to Revere and work a second job that ended up at midnight. And he did so for 
10 straight years with the exception of this basketball season. And I'll never forget that particular portion of life because he was able to do this with the faith that everything would be okay once he was able to get through the experience. And he did so. And from that particular time on, he made our family stronger. And this is what he was able to do and give for us. And the faith that he had and the faith that he lived with, and he was someone who I would say if there were 365 days in the year, he was in a church, 363 of them, because that was how strong his faith was. And what he gave to us as a family was the ability to be able to know and understand that we could be able to get through anything. And that aspect has carried on through the generations. And what he has been able to give us is a gift that is fantastic. The, the gift of Magus that Chevrolet uses, the experiential aspects of being able to give and, and reach out to others, is absolutely a positively phenomenal. No one gave more than he did. And throughout the course of time, um, you would always have great experiences with my father. And in 1963, um, my father took me to Fordham for the 25th reunion of his football team. And one of the members of the football team, and actually one of the members of the, of the Seven Blocks of Granite, was Vince Lombardi, who was at that time coach of the Green Bay Packers, and uh, going to New York City, being able to see what was the experience that my father lived through, and then all of a sudden, my father says, here's Vince, and I turn around, and he says, this is Vince Lombardi, and Vince goes, Dick up, and he shook my hand, and probably almost uh, knocked me down with the spread of his grip. And he said to me, he says, always remember, your father was the toughest guy I ever played against. And that particular moment, I think, crystallized just what the power of the experience that I had with my father was. And anything that I've been able to accomplish, anything that I have been able to be part of came through my father and mother. And that particular scenario describes as much as anything else of what I was able to get the gift of. And when Peter called me to talk about the Hall of Fame and uh, nominating for the Hall of Fame, I'm sitting there saying, I'm 